In this Technique Tuesday video, I'll be demonstrating ways to finesse the three needle bind off to achieve a variety of effects. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. Now, if you don't know the basic three needle bind off method already, I suggest you watch last week's video but before diving into this one. The resulting appearance of the three needle bind off depends on three things, whether it is done on the right side of the work or the wrong side, the stitch pattern of the fabric and how the join is worked. In the basic method, live stitches of the two pieces of fabric are joined by knitting together the first stitch of each needle. If you change the join to purling or by combining a knit and a purl, you can create a wide variety of effects. Some are bold, some are subtle, and some produce a seam that is virtually invisible. So today I'm going to show you how to work the three needle bind off using these alternative methods of joining stitches. So let's get started. So the standard method of the three needle bind off is to insert your, your working needle through the first stitch on each needle as if to knit. And then you knit them uh, both together, resulting in one stitch on the right needle and then the old stitches fall off. That produces this decorative ridge on the face of, on the knit side of stockinette fabric when you do the bind off with the knit sides facing out. So what I'm going to show you is how you can mirror this result so that you get a bind off chain that goes in the other direction. And I'll explain why you might want to do that after the demonstration. You enter the back needle and then you enter the front needle and then you wrap the yarn or pick it as if to purl as you wouldn't for any normal purl stitch. And then you're going to go through, back through that front needle and through the back needle and then let both of those stitches fall off. So then you have one stitch on the right hand needle and now you're going to want to repeat that. So through the back, through the front, purl, you come out through each of those two stitches and you let them come off the needle. You can do that at the same time or you can do them one at a time. I'll, I'll demonstrate that. So you've got two stitches on the needle and now it's time to bind them off. So you bind one off. Now you have one stitch on the needle and it's time to join the next two stitches. So you enter the back, enter the front, And that you come out this front needle. You can let this, this stitch come off right now and then you can go through the back needle or you can go through both of them and then let them come off um, the needle. Now again you've got two stitches on the right hand needle and you can bind off. So uh, you just keep repeating this. You just purl them together. It's, it's very similar to the standard uh, three needle bind off, but you're purling instead of knitting. So as I mentioned, you get mirrored results. When you are knitting the two stitches together, the bind off chain wants to roll toward the knit side. So it wants to roll toward this front side. And um, the two, the heads of the two stitches that you're knitting together end up creating a double headed purl ridge going across the face of the fabric. When you bind off purl wise, those purl bumps end up facing you and the bind off chain rolls away from you. So this allows you to create symmetrical mirrored results. If you were say doing a sweater shoulders and you wanted to do these decorative ridges on each shoulder, uh, if you didn't mirror them like this, then your other option would be to work both shoulders um, in the knit two together method, which means you either work one shoulder from armhole to neck and then neck to armhole and the chain faces front but goes in that direction on both shoulders, or you work armhole to neck on each side and one of the shoulders has the chain facing the front and the other one has it facing the back. So uh, many knitters are not going to care. They're, they'd rather do both of them the same way. Um, and they are going to think this is a pretty minor aesthetic difference. Other knitters are going to really, really want a mirrored result. 
For this next method, we're, we're going to join the two pieces of fabric by knitting through the front needle, but purling through the back needle as we join. So I'm gonna demonstrate it first with continental knitting and then with English knitting because it's a little, it's a little bit less intuitive how to do it one way um, versus the other. So with continental um, knitting, you want the, the yarn to be to the left of these two stitches as you enter them. So you're gonna enter the first stitch on the front needle as if to knit, and then on the back needle, you're going to enter as if to purl. So you're going to pick the yarn as you would normally, and you're going to exit through this back needle as if you're gonna complete that purl stitch. I'm gonna let it come right off the needle. And now you have to come back through this front stitch, which is knit. So you have that one done. So the tricky part of this is remembering that the yarn has got to be between the two needles. So it, it's, it's behind the first needle, which is knit, and it's in front of the, of the back needle, which is where the pearls are, so that's why it has to be in there. So once again, you enter the first stitch in the front needle as if to knit, and the back one as to purl. And you complete that back purl and then you complete the front knit. Now you have two stitches on the right-hand needle, so you can bind the first one off. And once again, come, th oops, I gotta make sure I have the yarn in the, in the, between the two needles. Enter as if to knit, enter as if to purl, finish the purl on the back, finish the knit on the front. Now you, again, you have two stitches on the right-hand needle and now you can bind off. I'll do one more time and then I'll switch to English. So the, the yarn is between the two needles. Enter the first as if to knit. And remember, see how this yarn is to the left of the, of the working needle. Enter as if to purl. Complete the purl stitch. Complete the knit stitch. Then do the bind off. And just like with the standard three needle bind off, if you get focused on joining stitches and you accumulate more than two on the right hand needle, you can just slip the resulting extra stitches to your uh, one of your needles and then chain off, slip, chain off, slip, chain off. You don't have to undo any of your work. For English style knitting where you're holding the yarn in your right hand, because the, the yarn is held to the right of the stitches, you're going to be switching between the knit and the purl position, just like you would be switching um, if you were ribbing or doing seed stitch. So the yarn is currently in back. I'm going to enter as if to knit. Then I'm going to bring the working yarn um, in front so that I can enter as if to purl. Then I'm actually going to wrap it around the needle, finish the purl, but then I have to bring it back to the back to finish the knit because like that. And then I can bind off. So I'll, I'll do this a few more times. Enter as if to knit, bring the yarn uh, out of in front so that you can enter the purl stitch. Now you're actually going to wrap around the working needle, finish the purl, bring the yarn back so you can finish the knit, and then bind off. So there are a few more movements, but they're the movements that you would use when switching between knits and purls uh, anyway, where you move the yarn before you can wrap it. So enter as if to knit, bring the yarn to the front so you can enter that stitch as if to purl. Now you wrap the yarn finish the purl, bring the yarn to the back so you can finish your knit, and then do your bind off. So you can get this uh, a decorative a contrast color for the chain, or you can use the same color, and it's a it lies it, it lies much flatter than it would um, 
than it does when you use the knit two together or purl two together. When we do a standard three needle bind off where we knit the two stitches together, or even when we do purl two together, the two stitches, the two faces of the fabric, when they're worked together, uh, they're either uh, knit two together, and which creates purl bumps that way, or the purl two together, which creates purl bumps going that way, so facing you or away from you. Um, but both of those purl bumps are on the face of the fabric. So when you're, they're on the face of the stockinette fabric, what we see is we see a double headed purl. So we see like the two stitch heads right here creating this purl bump right here. And then on this side of the fabric, this is like the knit side was facing us. When you bind off knitwise, the, the bind off chain always wants to roll toward the knit side. So when you combine these two things together, creating a column of double headed purl stitches plus a knit side bind off chain, you get this pronounced ridge in the bind off chain facing you. When you do this knit purl combination instead, you get a very flat bind off chain that doesn't roll at all. And the reason for that is because you're knitting one stitch and you're purling the other. And so rather than the two heads being pointed in that way or that way on the same side of the fabric, instead they're layered on top of each other like this. And one of the stitch heads is on, top, uh, is on one face of the fabric and the other stitch head is on the other face. So if we look at the side, of this chain, we knit this direction and we purled in that direction. So if you look on this side, we can see a line of purl bumps right under that bind off chain, but we only see one, we don't see the other. And the reason is, is because that other uh, stitch head for the stitches that were going this way are on this side of the fabric. So you can see this row of purl stitches that's formed with the dark uh, yarn and also the light yarn, that is the other stitch that was from the other piece of fabric. So when you do it all in one color, it just creates an uninterrupted stitch pattern. You can see the two layers of stitches right here, but it forms a regular purl row um, that blends right in with that purl fabric. So regardless of what the stitch pattern is, if you use the knit purl combination join, you will get a flat chain on the side of the work where you did the bind off. And on the reverse side, you're going to get a, a line of purl stitches uh, that are formed from uh, two layers of stitches, but it's, it's still a, a row of purls. If you look on this side, it's really obvious because this is stockinette and we have that single row of purl stitches. Here I have a knit purl fabric, and again, the bind up chain is lying flat. And the other side of the work is, is the same stitch pattern, but you can see that you get that line of purls going all the way to cross. They kind of blend in more when they're in a, a column of purls, but they're very obvious when they're on top of uh, these columns of two knits. With garter stitch, you can get some um, very subtle differences depending on whether the two pieces of fabric that are facing out while you are binding off have purl bumps right below the needle or if they have knit stitch, smooth knit stitch right below the needle. So if you have a smooth knit stitch right below the needle on each side and then you do the knit purl join, you're going to get this chain that has some separation between the chain and the, and the first ridges on each side. And then on this side of the fabric, you're going to have three rows of purl bumps all in a row rather than the ridges of garter stitch. Now, purl bumps and garter stitch ridges are really hard to tell apart, um, but they, are, they do exist in this fabric. Now in this fabric, this was knit, so that the purl bumps were right underneath the needle on each piece of fabric that was facing out. So then when we did a knit on this side and a purl on this side, you're essentially working another row of garter stitch while you are working your bind off chain. And on that side, 
then you get a complete continuity of the garter stitch fabric. Again, there's a little bit more of a gap. There's not an extra row of stitches, there's just a little bit more of a gap right here. And if you look from the side, you can see that the seam line stitches are a little bit depressed compared to the ridges of the other garter stitch. But if, there were, if this were on a shoulder or stretched apart a little bit, you'd be hard pressed to really tell the difference between them. So this is kind of a, an interesting way to fake a graft, but still have the sturdiness that you get from the bind off chain. You can see that there are a lot of possibilities for using the three needle bind off. The main thing to understand is that if you join the fabric using knit two together, or purl two together, you'll get a seam with a ridge on the bind off side and a ditch on the reverse side. Joining the fabric by using a knit purl combination will result in a flat chain on the bind off side of the work and a row of purls on the reverse side. I suggest experimenting with little swatches of 10 or 12 stitches to play with the possibilities. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks, and there's a link to that down in the description. You can find my other videos on finishing techniques in this playlist up here. And for my casual Friday videos, you can click over here. To subscribe to my channel, click up here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.